हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू बीटेक फर्स्ट ईयर फिजिक्स कोर्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई हैव इंट्रोड्यूस्ड द मैक्सवेल्स इक्वेशन हाउ एवर आई टोल्ड दैट देयर शुड बी सम मॉडिफिकेशन इन द एम्पियर्स लॉ एंड दैट वाज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय मैक्सवेल सो टुडे आई विल शो यू हाउ मैक्सवेल मॉडिफाइड द एम्पियर्स लॉ सो लेट्स स्टार्ट now as we see the equations of electrodynamics before maxwells are like this so these are those four equations so i told that the first three equations are okay with the maxwells equation but we need modification in the ampere's law okay so let's try to understand now if we choose this third equation now if we apply the divergence on the left side of this equation and the right side of this equation it becomes like this so if we take this divergence inside the parenthesis it becomes del dot b and you know from the second equation del dot b equal to 0 so the the right side term of the equation becomes 0 and if we see the left side term that is divergence of carl e so divergence of carl e will be always zero because this is a vector identity one can prove that divergence of carl of any vector field is always zero so this equation is consistent if we apply the divergence on the both side of this equation now let's see the fourth equation if we apply divergence on this equation it becomes like this so as i told the divergence of carl of this vector field here this is the magnetic field it will be zero and what about right side term that is del dot j so del dot j may not be zero always so in general it is not zero so for steady current it may zero it is zero but for suppose we are not dealing with magnetostatics so in that case we cannot tell it is zero del dot j so how we will um, solve this problem that we have to understand right so this there is inconsistent inconsistency in the equation so we have to solve this problem so to solve this problem let's try to understand the continuity equation first okay so the continuity equation means this is the continuity equation of charge now suppose we are considering a conductor and charge is flowing through that conductor now here this uh, j is called the volume current density and if we consider a elemental tube here where this da perpendicular means the perpendicular cross sectional area of this tube da perpendicular and the current which is flowing through this tube is di so now if i do this di divided by da perpendicular it will give us the j so the definition of j can be like this the current per unit area perpendicular to the flow of the charge okay so that means through a conductor charge is continuously flowing okay so now we can write the total current which is flowing through that conductor that can be written like this so here if we tell this cross sectional area total cross sectional area is s so we have to integrate over s so th uh, this is da perpendicular so if we write down in terms of vector it becomes j dot da right now the volume charge density is also can be written like this rho into v so rho is the volume charge density and v is the velocity of the charge flow now how we can write down like this you can understand uh, so suppose rho rho is what rho rho is q divided by volume so i if i write v is the volume v right and this v is the velocity so 
velocity means the distance or displacement covered in time t now this v volume we can write l into a a if i write area so l l will cancel out and you you are left with this term q divided by a and t so q by t q by t is actually i right and divided by a so i by a is j right so this is right the equation which we are writing here it is correct now so total charge per unit time leaving a volume so this is a volume uh, so in that case we can write like this so similarly here if we consider v v is the velocity so l by t and that uh, time time we are considering here that means here the uh, charge density is actually changing with time so rate of change of the charge density so that that we are considering and that length l we are uh, clubbing with this area then we will get this volume so this is the elemental volume of that uh, volume element which we are, we are considering right now according to Gauss's divergence theorem we know this right so this is the closed surface integration j dot da and this is the divergence of that volume current density over that volume which is enclosed by the surface so using that we can write this right so now what does this signifies so here this minus sign actually reflects that uh, due to the outflow of the charge the remaining charge is actually decreasing inside the volume so charge is flowing out so what will happen rest of the charge which will that will be decreasing with time so that is actually is telling here so this is the rate of change of the charge density and it is telling that charge is flowing out right so so for a particular volume for any volume we can write del dot j equal to minus del rho del t so basically here charge is conserved continuity equation so this is the continuity equation and it tells that charge is always conserved whatever charge flows out through a surface that must come out at the expense of remaining charge inside the volume okay so this is the continuity equation now from this actually we will understand we will understand what is the problem in the ampere's law there is some problem in the ampere's law uh, if we consider a capacitor in a circuit so the continuity equation will be not valid here inside the capacitor because you can see through the outer circuit a conduct conduction current is flowing the i is the conduction current that is flowing but where is that current here so it seems to be that our continuity equation is not satisfying here right so here in this figure it is showing how a capacitor is charged up so basically charge are accumulating on the capacitor plates if we have, if we put a battery over here now to understand the ampere's law first we will consider a surface like this so this is a flat surface and the conduction current is actually cross can cross this surface so this is basically the enclosed current enclosed current by this surface by this loop amperian loop so it 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 tells that the ampere's law we can apply for this current right so this is correct now if we apply if we uh, consider another surface which is this balloon shaped surface which is inside this capacitor and uh, you can see there is no current so apparently it seems to be there is no current so in that case 
if we apply the Ampere's law, it's, it will be like this. It seems to be like this. But it is not correct because we are not considering the effect of this capacitor. So, this is the new feature which we are considering in this circuit. So, we are not considering that in this equation. So, now how you will fix up this problem? How Maxwell fixed up this problem? So, for that, so let us consider that there is a total current and the total current we can divide like this. This is the conduction current through the external circuit and another current, this is a new current we are introducing that is the displacement current inside the capacitor. Okay. So, now let us try to understand how this displacement current we can uh, form, we, what is the form of the displacement current. So, we know that electric field uh, is generated in a capacitor plate when charge is piled up on that plate. So, here sigma is the surface charge density, sigma by epsilon naught and sigma is q by a. Okay. So, q is the total charge on the plate and a is the area. Okay. Now, now when we connect the battery, so let us go back. When we connect the battery, you can see the charge are moving, they are piling up on the capacitor plate. So, after some time, the charge will be full, the plate will be fully charged, right. So, in the transient time, what will happen? Charge is changing on the plate, continuously charging pile up and uh, the charge will be changing, right. So, the electric field inside the capacitor plate will also change. So, that is why if we take the time derivative, it will give us like this and this is the current basically which is flowing and this current is actually correspond to this displacement current. So, now if we add up this displacement current here and the conduction current, the total corrected Ampere's law becomes like this. Okay. So, this is that extra term which we have to consider due to the displacement current. So, if now, now suppose there is no capacitor, so in that case this term will be not there, right. Now, let us see how, how this uh, law is actually valid. So, if we consider that flat surface, so there is no capacitor, so there will be no electric field. So, total current that I enclosed is actually the current which is flowing through that outer circuit that is the conduction current I that we consider. On the other hand, if we consider that balloon shaped surface which is inside the capacitor, in that case there is no conduction current. So, in that case this I enclosed will be 0, but so this term will be 0, but there is this extra term that is del E del T dot d A. So, this is basically I D by epsilon naught. Okay. So, that is actually I D here is our current which is flowing through the circuit. So, we get the same answer for this for two different cases for two two surfaces which we are considering one is flat surface another is balloon surface. So, for the first case it, it comes from the genuine current right or the or the conduction current and in the second case it is coming due to the displacement current so that is the point okay so so if we use the stokes theorem then in that case this carl v will be mu 0 jc plus mu 0 epsilon 0 del e del t so here this jc you know the volume current density due to the conduction current and here this J D is we are considering epsilon naught del E del T. So, that is the displacement current density and that was introduced by James Clark Maxwell and if you will see that if we do not introduce this term later on when we when we write down the wave equation for electromagnetic fields from there we will find out how how electromagnetic fields are propagating okay so as we told as we told that 
uh, electric field and magnetic field is perpendicular and also the propagation direction is perpendicular uh, both the vibrational direction of electric field and magnetic field that can be proved from the wave equation so if we don't introduce this term we cannot solve the problem okay so if we try to understand the same problem from the continuity equation so we can understand like this so inside the capacitor there is this jd displacement current there will be a uh, displacement current density so if we write down del dot jd so that will be basically minus del rho del t now here this rho is we know that epsilon 0 del dot e divergence e from the first equation of the maxwell so uh, now if we keep this divergence in the outside of this parenthesis it becomes like this so we can see that this jd is basically epsilon 0 del e del t which is also we have explained here okay so this is all about today's class and in the next class I will discuss about how to write down the Maxwell's equation in free space vacuum and uh, there uh, then we will solve we will solve the uh, we will write down we will construct the wave equation and we will solve the wave equation so from there I, as I told we will understand the um, uh, how the electromagnetic fields is propagating okay so thank you